Su City Fourth Academy Headmaster, Zhu Jinlong, addressed the students. Today, each of you comes to school and becomes a player of the inner world. He told them that the moment they enter this formation, it is the system that would determine the class for them, and fate is what will define whether they end as a strong warrior, an immovable knight, agile assassins, or powerful mages. Jin Long continues to say he thinks they will all become strong individuals of their respective classes. He then activates the transfer formation. Amongst the students is Kaio Yu, who had been reborn 18 years ago, and he finds himself in a Kaiji star, a parallel world so much like Earth. In contrast, the artificially developed inner world has appeared overnight, and it is from there that mankind is overturned as of now. Various difficult dungeons appeared all around the world. Therefore, at the age of 18, all humans have abilities through transfer formation, using those to clear the dungeons. He has killed his way through the monsters, leveled up, gaining attribute points to increase their powers. The system welcomes Kaio Yu to enter the inner world for the very first time. It then asks him if he would like to start the draw for his class. Kaio Yu replies yes, and in his mind, he's begging all the gods that he should get a good class. After the processing, the system congratulates Kaio Yu for getting into a hidden class, Necromancer. Kaio Yu is ecstatic about it as Necromancer is an extremely rare class, and only a handful of people in the whole world can receive it. They could summon countless high-level undead creatures from the gates of hell with just one wave of the staff, and as long as they have sufficient mana, a necromancer can be a one-man army. Normally, having a hidden class means being stronger than the others, so Kaio Yu will have to check his attribute page. However, he was shocked to see that his spirit is zero. While crying out in pain how can a necromancer have a spirit level of zero, the system tells him that the initial attributes points are randomly distributed and the highest he can get is 10. Kaio Yu complains that spirit is a mage's most important attribute and he can't fight if that's below level 5. But it only asks the system if he wants to draw for his talent. He tells the system to do what it wants as even with high-grade talent. It is pointless with talent at 0. Then the system says to him, Congratulations for receiving the talent Brave Heart of a Mage. Then it shows him the effects. The passive grants him free attribute points if he kills an enemy, and the active boosts others of his attributes value to the same magnitude as a certain attribute's value. Kaio Yu was shocked as he read about the passive effect. He was complaining how almost impossible it was to get free attribute points. System says, I told you, when you are leveling up, then only you will get it. Kaio Yu realized that with his skill, he can only get free attribute points as long as he kills his enemy with a physical attack. He cheered him up saying he could use the active effect to push his attributes up to their limit, or become a 10-point man in all aspects. He finds that as a newcomer with a 10 in every trait, he would evolve into a monster written in history. However, if he waits for his power to level 1000, or even 100,000 before utilizing it, then he is a genuine all-rounder warrior. Kaio Yu considered for a while. If I have to use physical attacks with the passive skill, then strength will have to become my most important attribute. He then tells the system to put all the 10 attribute points in strength. After that, he recalls that his next step would be to register and finish the beginner's task, as he could only get into a class after success in the task. Teleports Kaio Yu to the beginner's task where he meets an NPC who introduces herself as Elaine and says she will be his guide, reasoning that Elaine is pretty. So Kaio Yu says he wants to register and receive the beginner's task, and she says it's fine, reassuring him she is there for such a thing. Elaine gives him his beginner's gift, which turns out to be an old robe, a beginner's staff, and an F-grade skill book called Skeleton Summon. Kaio Yu reasons that the robe is more of an accessory and the summoning skill is useless with zero spirit points, but the staff looks very strong, and with 20 strength points, it will be useful to hit stuff. He asks Alliance what will be his task, and she explains that it is to escape the Misty Cave. She explains that he has to be careful during the task as he cannot kill any of the skeleton soldiers and he should just find the quickest way out of the cave. Unfortunately, Kaio Yu entered the cave without listening to her instructions. Kaio Yu enters the cave through the portal. He wonders whether Elaine is still talking, 
but he decides not to bother about that as the beginner's task would not be that difficult. He looks around wondering why skulls are filled in the place. Suddenly, an attack comes his way a level 1 skeleton. Kaiyou smashes the monster with his staff, and the monster falls to the ground dead. Its head rolls on the ground. Kaiyou checks and says it would be harder to fight without magic. System message appears, Kaiyou defeated the skeleton using physical attacks, has acquired one attribute point, and three experience points. It was the first time Kaiyou killed a monster in one shot, so he gets awarded an A-grade skill called Miracle of Might. Really lucked up that I have received an A-grade skill, so he checks its effect. The system said that each point of the player's strength attribute can convert into two points of attack power. Kaiyou understands that strength determines damage output, while defense determines damage reduction. Normally, one point in strength is the same as one point of attack power, but with this skill if his opponent had zero defense, he can deal 42 damage in one hit. He says it is incredible that the value of the skill lies in being able to use one point of strength as two. Suddenly, many skeleton soldiers come up from the ground to attack him. Seeing them, he makes a decision to concentrate on finishing off his mission first. Soldiers are no different from the previous one. They immediately attacked him with swords and Kaio Yu utilized his staff to inflict 20 damage killing them. After defeating four skeleton soldiers he receives four attribute points and 12 experience points. Kaio Yu also leveled up and has become a level 2 necromancer. He received five attribute points as well, this time for leveling up for the first time. He is happy over this, and he reckons that if he adds to this the four attribute points he received by killing the skeletons, then his strength has really increased by 30 points. Kaiyou thought that would be truly miraculous if a regular skeleton soldier had up to 10 points in one attribute. He then asks himself if the skeleton soldiers were to farm levels in this misty cave, that would be too easy. A level 3 skeleton captain suddenly emerged from the ground, also a normal monster, but with 50 health points and 15 strength points. Kaiyou believes it shouldn't be an issue if the skeleton hits him. He thinks of such as the fact that it only possesses one agility, thus he is the one to make the first move. He leaps at the captain, but the captain uses his shield to defend himself, and then swings his long spear at Kaiyou who moves away right away. He is astonishing with the fact that the skeleton captain attacks, then smashes the floor while under defense. Kaiyou sees an opening when the captain pulls out its spear from the ground and rushes over to attack the skeleton's stomach. He cuts the captain in half, and it falls onto the ground. Kaiyou leaps up to finish it off, shouting, Try blocking this, and he hits the captain so hard that it loses all its 50 health points and dies. Kaiyou earns 3 attribute points and 10 experience points. The young man realizes that the captain was a tough opponent, and so he asks himself how others will finish the beginner task. Just then, a round yellow object comes in before him, and he picks it up. It is a monster core. Kaio Yu remembers that the principal told him that after killing a monster, maybe there is a possibility for a core drop and he can get random rewards when the core is opened. He opens the core and gets skeleton fists at D grade disposable. When used, there is a 100% opportunity to make the next hit critical damage. Kaio Yu remarked, if it wasn't disposable, then it would have been all right. Skeleton soldiers begin emerging from the ground to attack again. Kaiyou was dazed by the increasingly multiplying skeleton soldiers, coming at him from all around. Kaiyou tried to explain to himself that even if he was on level 2, his health point was barely 20 points and could get hit accidentally. He strides out, killing the skeleton soldiers with one hit each, and after dispatching them, Kaiyou goes to level up again. He reckons it is a good thing that the skeletons have only one point in agility. Meanwhile, as Kaio Yu fights inside, all the other students manage to escape the dungeon and complete their beginner missions. All of them are boasting about the classes they had woken up, and among them, a student wondered why the principal had not announced anything when everybody is out. They ask if someone is still inside, and the others burst into laughter asking how long it would take for one person to finish such a simple task. One of the students commented that even if the skeleton soldiers are strong, they run so slowly that the students will not get caught. 
at the time of death inside, he will laugh uncontrollably, as if saying that another student, and he is Kaio Yu's buddy, worries. He tries to tell himself that something bad did not happen. Back in the dungeon, Kaio Yu just killed the last skeleton. He is wondering, are they all dead? Why is there no notice of task complete? Now, somebody yells at him through a loud voice. The skeleton heads lying on the ground now start floating in air. Kaio Yu stands up staring in astonishment at the skull starting to fuse and later turns into a huge skeleton monster. This is the level 10 skeleton king, and Kaio Yu shakes his head in shock at how there should be a boss in the beginner's task, killing all the beginners. The skeleton king raises his staff at this time and will attack Kaio Yu. Kaio Yu narrowly evades the skeleton king's assault. The ground shatters beneath him. He reasons that he is fortunate not to be struck because that would have resulted in his demise. Moreover, he acknowledges that the creature lacks agility, which constitutes his sole advantage. Its defense, after all, is formidable estimated at 60, and he remains uncertain whether he can penetrate it. With determination, Kaio Yu strikes the beast with his staff, successfully diminishing its health points. He reflects, if he can land ten more attacks successfully, victory might be within reach. He continues to batter the monster, gradually sapping its vitality, while the creature attempts to counterattack. However, Kaio Yu deftly sidesteps its blows. He ponders whether the beast exists merely to intimidate novices. Nevertheless, he resolves to persist in his assault. Suddenly, the monster bellows, revealing it has for years defended the cave, lamenting that this is the first instance of a player breaching its depth. It claims it would be stronger had fewer of its minions perished. Yet here stands a novice like Kaio Yu, challenging its formidable defense. The monster asserts with a menacing growl that Kaio Yu cannot be left alive. Thus, it launches yet another attack. However, Kaio Yu manages to evade once more contemplating why the monster appears at least stronger and faster than before. The relentless creature strikes again, but Kaio Yu adeptly evades, reasoning that a direct hit will no longer be a possibility this forces him to first restrict the monster's movements. As they delve deeper into the dungeon, Kaio Yu observes the boulder which looms ominously behind the monster, teetering on the brink of collapse. The skeleton king lunges at him again, prompting Kaio Yu to dash toward the precarious boulder. He halts before it and begins to taunt the monster, challenging it to come at him. This provocation incites the creature's fury, and it attacks Kaio Yu, who fails to dodge completely this time. He feels a jolt of pain, reasoning that the monster merely brushed against him. His health points plummet dangerously low as the monster rushes to strike again. In defiance, he forces his body to move, narrowly dodging the blow, which causes the monster to miss and crash into the boulder instead. As Kaio Yu anticipated, the boulder starts to crack and descends upon the monster, exacerbating its health point loss. Kaio Yu concludes that he must terminate it swiftly before it rises once more, and he must eliminate it with a single strike. Subsequently, he employs the skeleton fist set acquired from the core. Ultimately, he succeeds in vanquishing the skeleton king. The system informs him that he has fulfilled the beginner's quest, congratulating him on officially becoming an inner world player. It further announces that Kaio Yu has been granted 30 free points, an additional 10 points for executing a physical attack and an elevation of 3 levels due to his initial kill. Furthermore, he receives the boss equipment namely, the Ring of the Skeleton King which is classified as Grade C and enhances his normal attack damage by 50%. Kaio Yu remarks that it lacks the potency of the fist set, however, its key advantage lies in its reusability. If he opts to sell it, it could fetch several hundred thousand. He recalls the system mentioning that this is the first instance of the Skeleton King being defeated. Although he ponders how others manage to clear the test, he ultimately resolves not to dwell on that matter and exits the cave via the portal. Kaio Yu finds himself teleported to the location where the other students are gathered. Zhangdi, his concerned friend, immediately embraces him. Surprised, Kaio Yu inquires about Zhangdi's action. However, Zhangdi only questions why he took so long to finish the task, stating he nearly thought Kaio Yu had perished. Kaio Yu is astonished that the others completed the mission, and Zhangdi clarifies that it has been three hours since the last student emerged. 
Kaio Yu queries him regarding his class and Zhangdi, with a hint of jest, boasts that he is a mage. Yet, Kaio Yu finds this peculiar, wondering if they all attended the same location. The class representative, Ma Fei, then approaches Kaio Yu, taunting him for being the last to exit. He remarks that all Yu possesses is good looks, which are rather useless in a world dominated by talent. Fei questions whether Yu knows his class, but Yu is perplexed as to why Fei seems intent on provoking him. Finally, the principal announces that everyone is now registered and the entire class will engage in beginner's training the following day. He suggests that they should all introduce themselves, along with their class and talents, to foster familiarity among them. Zhao Ziyu proclaims with fervor her identity as a mage and healer, while Zuo Yu asserts she serves as a shield, her talent classified as B. Fei, on the other hand, reveals himself to be a swordsman also bearing a B talent, prompting the students to extol him as their leader. The principal reason for this perception of someone with B-rank talent as a prodigy lies in the fact that the current batch of students exhibits considerable promise. When it finally comes to Kaio Yu's turn, he declares himself a necromancer. However, he finds it inconvenient to disclose the specifics of his talent. The students, perplexed, ponder the meaning of being a necromancer. The principal clearly takes pleasure in clarifying that necromancy is a hidden talent, citing an instance in which a lone necromancer obliterated an entire union. This revelation shocks the students, particularly Fei, who reassures himself that Kaio Yu's class is inconsequential, given that mages are notoriously fragile and fearful of close encounters that could lead to their demise. Fei argues that necromancers are even more vulnerable than the average individual, as the lengthy casting time for summoning spells leaves them defenseless, deprived of teammates for protection. He recalls with some confusion that Kaio Yu did not share his talent. He wonders if it's because of its low rank. Yu feels embarrassed to admit this. Meanwhile, the other students commend Kaio Yu for being modest, despite possessing a hidden class. They assert that he has a down-to-earth personality. However, Yu argues that being a necromancer who cannot cast even a single spell and is merely slightly stronger than an average person is not impressive. He feels that since he lacks the ability to protect himself during training, he dares not make a big fuss. The principal observes Yu and reasons that once he completes the beginner's training, he will undoubtedly be able to enter the nation's best university. After everyone's introduction, the principal announces that they should return home and prepare for the next day's training. Zhangdi walks alongside Kaio Yu and remarks on how cool he is. He then inquires why Yu did not become a necromancer, asserting that he possesses at least eight points of spirit and that his other attributes are relatively decent. He asks Yu if his talent is bad and Yu who possesses a zero spirit point responds that it doesn't matter. Hard work can compensate for it. He examines all of Zhangdi's attributes and, upon noticing that they are all single digits, he wonders if his having 76 points elevates him to the status of a deity. As Kaio Yu arrives home, he announces his presence, a habit he maintains despite being the only one there. After all, his parents have vanished. In his memories, his parents consistently portrayed themselves as kind and good people. When he was six years old, they mentioned a trip to the capital, yet they mysteriously disappeared, rendering him an orphan. Kaio Yu clutches a picture of them and reflects on their whereabouts. It has been twelve years since that fateful day. He resolves to gain admission to the university in the capital, for he must uncover the truth. The following day, the principal addresses the students, stating he has just one wish regarding the training. If they feel they cannot handle it, they should back down immediately. The students are surprised to hear this, However, the principal continues to assert that it is better to fail the training than to die. Although there is no reason to be nervous, because it is typically not so dangerous, no player would die. He then mentions an exception which exists, a prior traumatic event where a single beginner's world caused a class of 40 to be entirely wiped out. He claims they vanished into thin air, and until that moment, they still do not know what kind of terrifying world it was. All they know is it was known as the Nightmare Village. Sensing the shock among the students, the principal reassures them there is no need to be solemn, and as long as they exit the inner world on time, they will face no danger. He then instructs them to prepare, 
for they must enter once the stopwatch reaches zero. After some time, the students find themselves transported to the inner world, which resembles a village. Some claim the place feels eerie, but Fay reassures them he will protect them all.